about everything that's happened before. But it looks like our players, oh, here we go. They have sat down. They are getting ready, Alex, for our round four feature match, which you chose at home. <laughs> uh, the Steelix versus Godfather. Yeah, this is it, um, everyone. We finally get to showcase exactly how Jimmy's going to utilize his Steelix deck into the meta right now. As we already mentioned, he is 3-0 alongside everyone else that was just part of our community choice as well. So yep. I, everyone is really excited to see how this is going to pan out. Does Jimmy have a way to handle the miracle force of that God of our EX deck mm. um, and the rest of the constituent draw power that is inherently in that deck as well? Is that efficient one prize attacker opportunity there? As we do see just Jimmy here, just starting to shuffle up. We do see Ooh. some fantastic Jeez. placements well um, in previous tournaments. You know, a world's top 16 back in 2017, a world's top 128 in 2019, and then Kostak. You know, then he's been playing a long time. It's a name I've seen throughout my time as well. And yep. it's just fantastic to see him back here again, showcasing just how great of a player he is. Yeah, and then, you know, over and he will be facing here in our round four feature match there. Um, our guard of our play. Oh, they're both going to shuffle up now and get ready. And, you know, uh, Alexander, you know, is uh, currently, you know, 3 0 as well. You know, Buckham top 32, uh, Liverpool Reader top 64, and New Trek special event. That's here. Well, last year, got top 64 as well. So, Alexander, you know, no stranger to doing well. And it looks like they're both going to be, you know, grabbing their opening hands to see if they have any mulligans. And then our round four match will be. Be starting, Alex. Whoa, I'm very excited. Yeah, this is a, a truly, truly exceptional matchup that we're going to be seeing. Like I said, we're not used to seeing something like Steelix out on the show as we just can showcase. It is that Steelix um, combined with that Dodrio. Um, it is zooming. It draw. is zooming yeah. draw. Come on. Once during turn, you may put one damage counter on this Pokemon. <laughs> if you do draw a card, that extra consistency there uh, for Jimmy, I'm sure, is going to play a massive part. But it also is an efficient attacker in its own right. Ballistic Beak for that one energy attachment, colorless energy, uh, mind you. 10 damage plus 30 for each damage counter on it. We've already seen with Zooming Draw, you're putting damage counters on as you're getting that consistency. But then with Steelix at the front as well, with Earthquake helping to ramp up that damage as soon as possible, so many options to have very good single prize attacks. We do see the prizes here. One Onyx prize with a Manaphy. And a Steelix. Yeah, Steelix at the top with one Reckless charge is that a dodo it must be a dodo yeah it's a dodo and then for alex we have our raging greninja and the celebrations mute and one copy of reversal energy sort of being impactful there but it looks like our round four feature match alex is starting we've got jimmy on the left playing that's Steelix versus alexander jimmy is going to start us off going to put the artisan into play which will let him grab any basic non rule box basic pokemon alex and pop it on the bench yeah a great stadium here just to kind of get get things going start setting up the board as we do see one of those onyx come down also a big tanky pokemon is a fighting time 120 hp but we'll be using um that opportunity to evolve it up to that steelix as soon as possible making it as difficult uh for alex to be able to take it down we do see another doduo come down as well a third doduo come down wow. trying to get that draw power of his own going obviously he doesn't have and just try and match a little bit of what those curliers can do on alex's side it's just a pass over after the energy attachment all right, and over to Alex. Has led that copy of Manaphy, so we will need to try and navigate that out of the active. You know, normally these Guard of our decks would love to get Celebrations Mew into the active turn one, but that won't be an option since it is prized, unless Alexander can find that Hisuian Heavy Ball. As Alexander does open up his turn by playing the Artisan, so we'll also be able to grab a basic non rule box Pokemon, pop it on the bench. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting to see how Alex is going to navigate this matchup now. Um, unsure if Alex knew uh, what Jimmy was playing <laughs> coming into this round. <laughs> so I'm just laughing at the fact, dude, would anybody know what's going well, on? Yeah. <laughs> Onyx and uh, Dodo, like, what's going on here then? <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. Maybe, he's, maybe he saw it at a cup. Who knows? Yeah, may maybe he saw that exact tweet that I mentioned as well. Yeah. Or maybe he was at the cup that Jimmy did well as. At, as it looks like Alexander is going to also play a level ball to grab himself a copy of what so two volts in play for alexander as he shuffles his deck haven't had a chance to consult alex's hand but i think was that battle vip bar no so we see iono a third waltz fantastic start there and i imagine the iono 
Yeah, the Iono just being able to put those ha those cards in his hand to the bottom of the deck and draw up to the number of prizes that are still remaining. Uh, so a great opportunity for Alex to refresh, try and look for the opportunity to maybe go into something like a support Pokemon. But at the time, uh, we have already noticed, of course, the Mew being prized yep. alongside the Radiant Greninja as well. Some of those other helpful draw Pokemon, just not currently available. As we just see the hand, the attachment back over the Jimmy now. Do we start to see that Steelix come smashing down under the board? But what is this hand? There's the attachment to the Doduo. I think it might have to be an Iono and see what you draw into. It does have the Jet Energy. We didn't want to attach that to the Onyx to sort of get it into the active. So we are going to see a Nest Ball. And let's see, got the luxurious capes there as well. Love that. Uh, give the, the the one prize Pokemon is attached to an extra 100 HP, but does give up an extra prize card if it gets KO'd. And let's see what Jimmy is going to grab here off this nest. We're going to be the Jirachi Astella Veil. I love that. Alex, what a fantastic card in this matchup mm -hmm. you know, for reducing that bench manipulation. So that would stop Cresselia, I believe, right? Yeah, there are lots of different opportunities there um, to just try and utilize little cute support Pokemon. Um, so that Jirachi there being able to be utilized in a lot of decks nowadays which have lower HP Pokemon. We're going to see a lot of cards in Jimmy's list, which are very akin to a, a, a previous deck we've seen, not in too much with Zoroark, that Hisurian Zoroark v okay, v deck. Star, yeah. There's a lot of cards like Damage Pump that are in that deck to kind of maneuver damage counters around, again, to help Jimmy extend and take massive knockouts. We do see a great ball come down. Ooh, oh. Um, oh. Does find from that top seven um, a do a do trio, but again has that opportunity to keep ramping up. I mean, it's quite not quite as powerful as refinement. Here, are we going to see those being used? Side, but it's still additional draws. We do see the Ultra Ball here, though. This could mean Jimmy can start finding a way to start swinging with that Steelix and that Earthquake attack. That's yeah, that's such a strong attack. 180 HP, 130 of damage off a of one prize Pokemon for one energy is so efficient. We know that that Dodrio, uh, that Dodo in the active, I should say, has a one retreat cost. So here we go. Uh, Steelix is going to hit the active. We could even see a zooming draw here. Are we going to see those being used? So it's going to put one damage counter on the one on the left, draw a card, could even do it again. One damage counter there. And as you said, uh, doubling up with it as an attacker, that ballistic beak. But I do think, oh, as we are going to see it on it, <laughs> Uh, hit the uh, hit the bench there as well, but I think we are going to see a little bit of seismic activity here. Alex, a bit of an earthquake. Jimmy takes his first prize card. Th three damage counters do have to get put on all Jimmy's um, bench Pokemon, but Jimmy is currently on the board in our round four feature match here. Alex. Yep, it's an incredible attack that has dealt 130 to the active, and then a further 150 to his own board, <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, which is incredible just from that Steelix. As we do move over to Alex now. Now, does have that um, Curlier there in the active, just looking to Mirage Step and try and get as much board action going. And we do see the Iona come down as well. An interesting thing that we need to keep an eye on, yeah. of course, with Earthquake constantly going on. He can only really get two off before he's taking his yes. own Pokemon out himself. But then, that's where the Dodrio start coming forward and start utilizing its own attack. That Ballistic Beak swinging away for a lot of damage. As we do see the Mirage step here just after the Iono Alexander just setting up his board getting ready to just find his way through this matchup of course right now staring down against only single prizes on Jimmy's side of the board guess it is worth noting if Jimmy does uh, want to uh, want to keep using um, Earthquake, do you, you do have those luxurious capes where you can actually push your bench sitter's HP up if you so desire. Um, but, 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 but like you said, Ballistic Beak will also double up as a fantastic attacker as well. Uh, Jimmy is going to start the turn off there by playing a Great Ball, which I think has failed. So we are going to see those top seven cards get shuffled back into the deck. And yeah, I think for Jimmy, this is one thing I like about these kind of decks, right? That's, I call them low maintenance day. You don't really have to do a lot, right? I mean, if Jimmy really wanted to, he could just attack again. But all you need to do is realistically just find energy, find your attacker, and attack. As we do see an Ultra Ball there, 
It looks like Jimmy is going to play that. Going to discard one copy of Onyx and one copy of Luxurious Cape. And this, I imagine, would find a Steelix or another Dodrio because you can keep drawing cards. Drawing cards is not a bad thing, Alex. No, it's fantastic. We've already spoken about how great refinement is on the Gardevoir side of the deck. Just being able to draw additional one cards here and there and then ramp up your damage as well. Like I said, Ballistic Beak with 100 HP, it could put 90 damage on itself. So 90 times 30 more, uh, because it's 30 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Yeah. 99 times uh, 3. We've got 270 damage plus the extra 10. 280 damage you can swing for. And that's even without using Luxurious Cape. Yeah, that's and that's a great number. That's getting all your V-Star Pokemon. As we are going to see a boss's orders into the refinement curly. They're going to remove some draw options there for Alexander and Earthquake. You know, the, the, the ground is shaking. And it's, I tell you what, the ground is especially shaking <laughs> for Jimmy's bench. Look at all those damage counters, Alex. Yeah, like I said, a total of 280 damage himself. 130 to the opponent's active and then 150 to his own board but nothing to be afraid of from Alexander's uh, from the board of Alexander's side because even with things like Cresselia and just kind of taking cheap easy prizes with that fantastic Moongo reverse attack there's nothing like a yoga loop that could come down and cause chaos on Jimmy's side of the board as we do see two refinements there the hand getting really big that shining arcana guard of our now coming down a card we've seen take many a massive knockout itself with that fantastic brainwave attack being able to just ramp up energy utilizing that guard of our EX to, um, to be able to psychic embrace and just overcome so many different Pokemon in the format. But it's just going to be an easy way of just swinging. If we can get the God of our EX here, oh, it does have the reversal energy in hand as well to stretch over and reach that 180 damage. That three energies are not enough. No. on that brainwave just from manual, a single manual attachments. As we see another Iono come down. And I think this is going to be a very important turn here for Alexander. You know, we go of Art loves to do this. You know, let your opponent take a couple prizes. You respond with a big KO. I say big KO. In this case, it's only taking one prize card itself. But, you know, try and have an Iono and leave yourself some refinements. The next turn, you can try and draw out of it yourself. I mean, Jimmy currently, you know, would like to find another stick. So maybe he just want to start using zooming draw now. But does still have a, a little bit needed to do if he wants to attack next time. Yeah, we do see the knockout there with the brainwave on that Steelix. But as a card that I've mentioned already once, Shay, yep. that damage pump is a way to maneuver damage counters yeah, around sure. so that you don't have to keep relying on um, Pokemon that are heavily damaged to attack. It, for example, we're able to keep yep, the damage pump. Maybe if we evolve up that Onyx, it has another 120 HP, or 110 HP, I should say, mm -hmm. to play around with. So then we could just start maneuvering things here and there to just, you know, get as much value out of those damage counters on those Dodrios as possible. As we do see a Colrus experiment, another very well-utilized supporter wow. um, alongside... That was a... Um, oh, yeah, it's a big... Very interesting card. <laughs> a lot of energy cards there. Super odd. And I believe it was a damage pump. It looks like Jimmy's debate whether to keep yep, the damage pump, one copy of energy, and a super rod. It's interesting to see Carl's experiment not in Lost Zone decks. We've seen it, you know, typically in like Arceus Giratina, not Giratina, sorry, um, Arceus <laughs> Duraladon decks we have seen yes. in the past. But I think Jimmy's just going to, you know, as we can see by this energy attachment, might be looking just to try and ride the, the, the Dodrio train out of here. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, he's got full value out of that first Steelix already. The Ooh, damage bumps could be start moving around. Maybe get it onto that Onyx because, yeah. you know, maybe it's, it's less useful as, uh, with damage counts on it. This 60 damage that's on the Dodrio now times about 30 is 180 so plenty of damage attack uh, damage counters on it to be able to ramp up that ballistic beak yeah, Ballistic Beat, what an attack name as well. We are going to see the zooming draw activation there, and you draw an extra card if you put one damage counter on the Dodrio. As we are going to see Ballistic Beak for KO on that Shining Arcano. And that was satisfying to say that Ballistic Beak. Very yeah, good. what's really interesting now is, is there a way for Alex to be able to overcome a two-prize almost deficit right now? Yeah, for Jimmy sure. Jimmy has taken three prizes. Alex has currently taken one. With another knockout, we'll be able to go down to four prizes remaining. Yeah. But but remember, Jimmy doesn't play any um, double prize Pokemon or two prize Pokemon. Yeah. It's just single prizes that Alex has to overcome. And he's already played maybe three Ionos. So there's yes. no, no way of kind of trying to limit the draw that maybe Jimmy has. But he still has those Dodrios with that fantastic zooming draw ability that you've mentioned here as well. So, so many questions being asked from Jimmy's deck. 
Yeah, so if we're Alexander here, you obviously want to try and respond to KO with a single prize Pokemon, right? I mean, yeah, Alexander does play a screen tail. That would obviously work. Obviously, you can't hit the bench, but could just, you know, slam into the active. Yeah, you could use another Brainwave, but again, that's a lot of resources that you would be giving up for an easy response, KO, Alex. Mm -hmm. but outside of that, that's the only one prize um, he could play, Alexander. Doesn't play the Cresselia, for example, so he won't be able to use that uh, Luna Glow, whatever it's called, the second attack on that. Oh, he does play, he does play, so I apologize. Luna Blast, could use that for free energy, dealing 110 damage. Funnily enough, would be great in this scenario. Yeah, I think there may be a world, there may be a game plan here at some point that Alex has to utilize Iono yeah, alongside sure. a Guard of our EX to attack yeah, with. Okay. Because then it can potentially tank a hit, yeah. uh, not lose those big prizes, and mm -hmm. after already disrupting Jimmy's hand, maybe taking out a couple of those Dodrios as well, yeah. maybe leaving it just with one Dodrio for zooming draw. Iono, Guard of our EX, is a comeback mechanic it that allows it to maybe overcome that. But let's see if that's going to be able to come down. Yeah, you're right. And I guess if you're trying to catch up on prize trade, you could, well, one way is to just throw one prizes, but another way would be absorb an attack mm -hmm. with a multi prize, and that would also get you there, like you mentioned. That Miracle Force the attack we see, not too often, but does deal the, the enough damage here, 190 for three energy, as we do see that uh, Zarshan V get discarded off refinement. So let's see what Alexander, I think does have the Guard of RTX and a Rare Candy in hand. Yeah, I can see them both there. But obviously, if you was to attach energy, that would obviously do damage to yourself as well. Yeah, I think I would like to find a way to still utilize single prize attackers for the time being. Yes, I agree. Um, so we do see the evolve up for the Shining Kana here. The Shining Kana, no energy from that to draw. There's another rare candy there. So can move up that route on the bench as well. As we do see the Cresselia come down. So yeah, utilizing a different uh, single prize attacker. Um, as well, potentially, as we do see the rare candy into that guard of our EX. Remember, a fantastic ability and attack, Psychic Embrace, as often as you like during your turn, attach a basic energy from your discard pile where you have to put two damage counters on that Pokemon. I think we're going to see a pay retreat. We're going to see a Moon Glow reverse to carry the active and then sort of, quote unquote, heal 20 damage off that guard yep. of our EX, which makes perfect sense as well, because you are going to want that guard of our to have as little damage as possible. If you're looking over the board, from Alexander, you don't know what your opponent's risk is. There could be some random dark type, uh, dark, type, uh, dark type attacker get there eventually. And you want to make sure you got as much HP to try and deal with that as possible. As it is over to Jimmy now. Going to start a turn, promotes, promotes that Dodrio. We want to see another Steelix coming down. And let's see what Jimmy can do. Super odd. The first card Jimmy plays. Yeah, just reminding ourselves as well. You've already mentioned that fantastic tool that Jimmy plays, that luxurious cape an opportunity to really stretch over and potentially take massive knockouts um, yeah. if it's able to get on a, onto a Dodrio and then maneuver more damage counters around. Could actually stretch for that guard of our EXKO. Oh, type play, but let's see if there's going to be a way of being able to get to that position. Okay, so what you're saying is, if Alexander does try and use the Guard of IX to try and tank a hit via Luxurious Cape and Damage Pump, but Ballistic Beat could actually reach that KO. That's something that we're going to, we are going to have to keep an eye on for back at home. For now, though, Jimmy is going to attach a Metal Energy to that Bench Dodrio. Has played a Chorus Experiment. Uh, did also play a Suprot and Artisan to grab a fresh Dodrio, uh, Dodo as well. Well, and it looks like we're going to see some zooming, zooming draw activation. There we go. And oh, damage pump, Alex. That oh. could be one piece of the puzzle. Just, just something we're getting to find out all of the game plans of Jimmy's side of the board here. But it's very simple, an opportunity just to draw again. You know, again, putting it down to one damage counter is never a problem in this deck. I guess if the board state stays like this, I'll get. We've got to see a damage pump here. So we're going to take two damage counters off Jirachi, put them onto another do Dodo, so that can attack easier enough. But with that Dojira being mean, 10 um, HP left, you could use the rolls to get a KO or a teleportation burst. Yeah, that is definitely an <laughs> option. Has Alexander seen that? He did start to stretch his uh, hand towards, towards the rolls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is really interesting. But then would it... It doesn't have to. It says it may choose to... Oh, no, it does say switch. Oh, it does say, oh, okay, so you probably wouldn't want to do it then, because everything, <laughs> everything on the bench you'd rather, um, well, keep. Try and protect. Yeah, yeah, Unless try it and goes protect. into another route that true, is in, in the hand as well. So there's there's a few options. We do see the refinement of a psychic energy there, another draw into the hand, another artisan, and a fog crystal, a number of very useful cards uh, for you um, as per usual. 
So it looks like uh, Alexander is going to play a Fog Crystal, going to search out for a basic energy or um, basic... Uh, Basic energy or basic psychic type, I should say. So I'm just trying to work out this matchup here. <laughs> it looks like Alexander was debating whether to grab the Scream Tail. Uh, which makes sense. You know, that is another one prize attacker that you can mm -hmm. use in this scenario. Um, but it's going to grab a basic psychic energy. Yeah, it's just one of those things now. Again, remember, we're having to keep an eye on the number of prizes that are remaining for both players. Jimmy with that two prize lead right now with two remaining. Alexander with a knockout here will put him down to three, but it's just finding that game plan yeah. um, to just stay out of range from Jimmy's board state as we do continue to see more cards draw. We do see the Professor's True as re um, a scenario, oh, yeah. sorry, not research, which is another fantastic option that we didn't see in the last round. No. Which would have, which would have got um, old Kai maybe out of that situation, that temping trap. But you could use that Professor Chura if you can successfully tank a hit with the Guard of IEX instead of having to maneuver it to the bench where it could be boss's orders. You're gonna have Professor Chura, uh, just reabsorb all that damage, and you can bench, and then you can re-evolve into another Curlia, start a little bit of a loop going. So that could be Alexander's way out of this sort of uh, two-price deficit. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's the best game plan here, as we do see a counter catcher onto Ooh, okay. Jirachi. Just kind of making uh, a different couple of options that are available here. There's the energy attachment from Psychic Embrace onto the active. We do see a retreat into the Scream Tail. Maybe just start swinging away. Maybe hoping Jimmy doesn't have a way to retreat out of the Jirachi. So an okay. another game plan well, being utilized here as well. But the, the, the ability from Jirachi would protect the bench, right? So it has to KO the Jirachi with Scream Tail? It's not damage counters moved onto the bench. It's oh, so it's damage. Oh, yeah, you snipe. are correct. No, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, Apologies about that. No, you So are. many support yeah. Pokemon nowadays that we have to be sure. There's a Luxurious uh -oh. Cape coming What's down. happening? What's happening, Alex? We see Luxurious Cape. We see the jet energy. We're going to see a damage pump boss. We are going to see a zoom in draw. Come on, Jimmy. Show us the magic. There's the boss. There's the boss. Alex. Alex, is it? And it is. That's it. That's, That's it. it, right? Yeah. yeah. B and Ballistic Beak for KO. Taking two prize cards on that guard of our EX. Yep, 10 damage counters on that Dodri. I did say it's it only did. a small stretch away. It 10 did. damage counters times the 30 more damage there. Would us hit the 300 with the extra 10? Would clean KO yeah. a guard of our EX, but it did have some damage it on there already. Yeah. But that's one fantastic way to showcase the ability of this Steelix deck. Are we just calling it Steelix deck? Steelix oh. Dodrio. Yeah, Dodrio. <laughs> Steelix Dodrio, fantastic partners in crime. <laughs> really are, right? And you can just see the synergy there from Jimmy. You use the Steelix mm. just to grab two or maybe even three quick KOs. And from there, you use your damage pumps to manipulate damage on your Dodrio. And where that Ballistic Beak, as we saw, was fantastic at just picking up um, KOs there. And, you know, with the with the damage pump, a luxurious cape, like you said, with the the, the previous 20 damage from the um, Psychic Embrace, yep. that Dodrio could reach there a little bit easier. And that just shows the intricacies of this matchup, Alex, where every damage counter, realistically, could swing the game. Yeah, what was fantastic to see from Jimmy's side of the board as well, it was able to set up so cleanly just being able to get a couple of Onyx yeah, down yeah. alongside the Doe Duos and then evolve them up when he needed to have Zooming Draw to stay out of those Ionos that were coming down from Alex's side. You know, Alex will need to start trying to apply that pressure, maybe take down some of those Doe Duos yeah. early on, maybe kind of limit that draw power that's available and then hit them with the Ionos. Yeah. Um, but so many different options. That Truro that we did see, you called it out as a fantastic option later in the game, but when you have cars like Luxurious Cape just hanging around without an Iono being disruptive mm. it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough ask but here we go both players we do see the fist bump both players now opening up Alex is kicking things off with that Cresselio in the active spot this time and did just top deck a battle of our people as, as we quickly consult the prizes. One mm. copy of Steelix for Jimmy, one copy of Guard of IX, and two copies of Level Ball. But Alexander is going to start to turn off there with that battle VIP pass. And I guess one thing you mentioned, Alex, is that now that you've seen how Jimmy's deck operates, now that we know that uh, Dodrio has that damage cap, which is high enough to one-shot your Guard of IX, do you think you start to change priorities and try and target those? Because you know Steelix can only do what I say only, but can only do 130, and if you want to use 
use it deals back massive amounts of damage to your own Pokemon. Yeah, I think it's definitely an, um, something that has to be considered from Alex's side. Of course, we've already seen the Jirachi on Jimmy's side inhibiting that uh, Moonglow uh, reverse yes. attack from Cresselia, but also does have the Manaphy's, of course, as well, which would impact the Screamtail from sniping the bench. Uh, so true. it comes down to how Jimmy's able to build out his board. So if maybe Jimmy is unable to find the Manaphy or is unable to find the Jirachi, neither of them are prized right now. You know, it could mean Alex could go for a different direction for each of those match uh, in, in this matchup, I say. As we do see Alex, you know, playing the Battle of IP pass, using concealed cards and passing it over to Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy starts off the turn getting down do uh, to do Dodo. Uh, <laughs> Dodos. How do you pronounce that again? No, duos. No, duos. There we go. We get there eventually. It's not like what I've had to say too often. <laughs> it's um, true. Getting them down and then using Artisan as well. Going to grab any basic Pokemon without a wall box. Yeah, what's well, really cool to see in Jimmy's deck as well, he doesn't actually play, despite needing a lot of Pokemon onto his board, he doesn't play Battle VIP first. He's just yeah. utilizing those artisans, so fantastic effects, playing those great balls, of course, because he does need to evolve up into yeah. uh, those stage ones as soon as possible. Of course, he's playing Nest Ball at the same time, but he's really trying to utilize those cards to get him into the game rather than just focusing on, well, I have to hit the Battle VIP pass yeah. turn one. It uh, looks like we're going to see an Iona. Now, we actually could see Onyx's hard headbutt attack, a hard headbutt yeah. attack, which I think could have actually come up in the last game. You know, Gardevoir can often have, you know, very little HP. That hard headbutt for one colorless energy does 20 damage, and then flip a coin if heads join your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage and effects, mind, done to this Pokemon. As we are going to see hard headbutt. That oh, right heads. there is an Onyx that's been well trained. That's taking no damage or no effects of attacks next turn. Wow. Yeah, really, really showcasing that defensive ability of the hard rock snake Onyx yeah, there. Yeah, let's go. Fantastic. So an opportunity to eventually evolve up inside Steelix and just kind of say, well, now you've got to deal with the big boy. Yeah, I mean, war. That, honestly, <laughs> the synergy here is just so good, right? The Steelix just takes up those extra fires, and we saw how strong Dodrio can be. Alex is going to try his best to stop that from happening as he did play uh, Concealed Cars, he's going to Psychic Energy, and now we'll be using Artisan. So... I think look at Alexander's hand. I did see an Iono. I do see a level ball. And I do see at least one energy. So we could see the Mirage step here, but it looks like he's going to go for a Waltz instead. Level ball going to be played as well. So this will probably tell us what Alexander's opting to do. Going to play, uh, grab a Refinement Curlia and a Fog Crystal as well. Yeah, so just to help remind the viewers at home as well, of course Onyx's attack does 20 damage, but that Cresselia has fighting rid Ah, resistance. true. Yeah, I didn't even see so that. Won't <laughs> actually take any damage. But at the same time, the main aspect of that is Onyx will have no impact to it here. The important thing to note, though, we haven't been able to see a Jirachi or a Manaphy come down and almost board locked for just one of them going yeah, forward. Yeah, true, actually. Because there are four Doduos on that bench. Yeah, I guess it's interesting because ideally you want to have as many um, Dodrio out as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but you would, and you probably want to have at least one of the Onyx in the early games. You're going to use Steelix at least a couple times, right? Yeah. So that means, yeah, having Jirachi and Manaphy down, at least in the early game, could prove quite tricky. As you said, Jimmy now has four bench Pokemon, so we'll be locked out having both of them at least for now. Yeah, so it's really important that this Onyx is able to find a way to, to stick around because it's the quickest way Jimmy's board is able to ramp up that damage. It's just a pass over after that refinement. Artisan being utilized here uh, from Jimmy. And that Onyx surely must be looking primed and ready to hard coat itself and evolve up to that yeah. Steelix. Yeah, it looks like someone's trade is someone, Jimmy's about to trade that Onyx holding a metal coat. He's about to evolve into that Steelix where it's going to be able to use that uh, Earthquake attack for one energy. So efficient with uh, 130 damage as well. And normally, the thing is, with an attack like this, a really uh, uh, high damage output move for one energy, the downside is you're doing three damage counters back to all your bench Pokemon. That's sad. Mm. However, when those Pokemon you are damaging do more damage, depending on how much damage they have on, and all of a sudden, you've almost turned the downside into a positive. The deck synergy here from Jimmy is just off the charts. Yeah, and just n knowing he doesn't need to utilize another Onyx for the time being, you know, yeah. getting that Jirachi down does have the threat of the Cresselia in the active spot right now. Of course, an easy KO with Earthquake, yep. dealing 130. 
more than enough to hit that yep. 120 HP of that Cresselia, yeah. and then just ramping up the damage. As I mentioned, Shay, it's not just a 130 on the active, it's 150 to your own board. It's doing 280 damage yes. everywhere. Um, across yeah. across the field, so it's just a very odd thing to not usually see. Yeah, yeah. But like you said, the synergy works. And as we are going to say, Professor's research there for Jimmy after he evolved to Dodrio, is that you could almost argue taking the prize as a benefit. I'd argue putting all, all that damage onto your Dodrio is almost uh, the upside of this attack, right? Uh, Jimmy does play that Professor's research, find himself an ultra ball, debate him over to play it. Could have three Dodrio out by turn two, Alex, whilst also taking a prize card. And one thing worth noting. That when Steelix evolves, obviously, it changes from a fighting type to a metal type. So resistance will no longer be an issue. But I tell you what that what that metal typing does do, Alex. It means you can hit a guard of RTX for weakness. Uh, not the God of IEX. Oh, sorry, I should uh, say, no, the... the Shining Arcana. Yeah, there yeah. we go, the Shining Arcana. Yeah. I got there eventually. Yeah, yeah no, you were right <laughs> earlier when you said that the, sh the God of IEX has got a dark, dark weakness. Yeah, dark, dark. Um, which is why we kind of suggested that maybe one game plan to kind of stay in the game, yeah. maybe take tank a hit, yeah. um, which you got correctly, you know, being able to tank a hit and then use Churro's uh, scenario to maybe tank another hit. Um, but this is where Alex's next turn is going to be so vital. Yes, last sure. last Last game... He went down two prizes before he was able to retaliate. Yep. He has to find a way to stay in the prize race right here, right now. As we do see that earthquake being used, seismic activity, the ground is shaking. Jimmy takes our first prize card, uh, prize card. But as you said, this this turn here for Alexander is crucial because, sure, you can come back from a one prize deficit. Two prize, a lot harder. Can Alexander topple this 180 HP Steelix out of the way? Let's find out. As he starts to turn off a player in a refinement and then of concealed cards. Let's see what he draws. There's a red candy. Ooh. Ultra Ball in hand. Does have level ball for other Curlier uh, refinements of it, uh, in his hand as well. So can continue drawing through the deck. Lots of different opportunities. Lots of different routes to get there. Remember, we'll need to find a way to hit both Shining Arcana, God of Art, and the God of Art EX to be able to ramp up enough energy onto an attacker to yeah. take down the Steelix. That 180 HP, really, really frustrating. Um, as a number for a single prize Pokemon. I tell you what, this early on in the game, you have to make sure you have enough suck energy in the discard or have access to reversal energy as well because I don't think that's a, actually a guarantee yep. right now this early on in the game. So a few early game uh, hurdles for Alexander to, to jump over, but that's the sort of advantages when you're playing a stage one that deals 130 uh, damage for one energy is that you can really force your opponent to answer questions quick because if you don't, it could go out of hand as we are going to see an Ultra Ball um, going to grab a guy. Of our EX. Yeah, is that uh, a decision to evolve it now as well? So maybe, maybe there is enough energy in that discard. So this is a way of maybe trying to yes. apply pressure as yes. soon as possible. If there are free energies in that discard pile, um, just being able to utilize mm. Psychic Embrace and then Miracle Force as a fantastic attack to deal 190. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, that's a lot easier to get free energy in a discard pile than like what five, right? Or, or with a reversal. Um, with the Iono as well, I love that. Going to reduce Jimmy's hand size doing everything. Think he can to stay in this game there is Alex. And this is going to be a lot more of an interesting one. I feel as if Alexander like said, got off to a slow start in the last game, but now can we immediately respond and not let this Steelix power up these Dodrio too much. Yeah, we do see a second refinement there. Does have energy in hand, you know, saves himself potential damage onto his own guard of Does have four psychic energies in this card right now. Okay. Um, but can limit the amount of damage that's going to be going on this guard of EX by just the hand attachment as well as utilizing some of that psychic energy embrace. If you see another Ultra Ball come down, maybe start trying to get set up with Shining Arcana Gardevoir. Yeah. Um, so lots and lots of, like I said, different routes here to try and figure out how best to combat this pesky Steelix. Um, and then also have to think about those Dodrios in the background as well. Well, I mean, that's the thing, right? If you're going to use Miracle Force here, if you can't manage to get um, Shining Arcana to do enough Ooh. damage, or Brem I should say, um, if you use Miracle Force, you actually open the door for that Dodrio to do a Madness next turn. Yeah, I think that was big there. Yeah. A big miss, unfortunately, from Alexander's side. That Shining Arcana could have got yes. an extra energy attachment, yeah. one or maybe even two, to keep the HP up as high as possible. Here right now, it's going down to 270 HP. Does utilize that uh, Miracle Force to take out the Steelix, of course. A good number there. Dodrio and 
the active spot. Lots of ball cards here as we move over to Jimmy. But there's a damage pump as well. There is a damage pump, I think. So, I mean, it is possible for Jimmy to take the KO here, right? You need to get, what, to... Nine, 90. Um, yes, yeah, so you need to get to nine damage counters on a Dodrio. So three damage pumps? Oh, no, uh, no, no, two damage pumps. And then one use of zooming draw. Yes. Yes, okay. And we are going to see a Manaphy come down as well. Oh, my goodness. Jimmy, are you... <laughs> Is, I mean, it, is, is this it, happening? <laughs> it'd be a game, but uh, it'd be a very strong scenario if you could. We are going to see these great balls being played. And don't forget that... Oh, oh I was gonna say, it's a great ball. I saw the damage. <laughs> <laughs> he can't take that, unfortunately. <laughs> so, it's so, oh, yeah. so close, but it's just one of those cards that he just needs to get into that position. But even if he just deals some damage here, but he doesn't want to limit potential yeah. Truro being great value. Yeah, so just viewers at home, so what uh, what Jimmy's going to try and piece together here, I think, is with two copies of Damage Pump and the Luxurious Cape as well, obviously, um, that Dodrio will be able to... Oh, no, you, you won't need Damage Pump. Oh, I apologise. Um, not Damage... A Luxurious Cape, I should <laughs> say. Via two uses of Damage Pump, Ballistic Beak will be able to KO this Guard of our EX. And we are going to see the Iono, but I don't think... Did Jimmy play that Damage Pump in his hand before? Um, he didn't have it. Did he have one in hand? I thought he did. I could be wrong now. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have to Let's have a look. check. But we see what the options are. If I'm yeah, just not mistaken, damage pump being able to move two damage counters from one of your Pokemon to any other Pokemon any any way you'd like. So yes. that could move it up to 80. With the zooming draw, we do see that moves up to 50. With one energy, that ballistic beak, if I'm not mistaken, nine damage counters times 30, 270 already, plus the 10 yeah. to 80. And that's more than enough of a stretch for the guard of our EX. I oh. hope. <laughs> well, I don't think well. I mean, we didn't see any damage pump in this game, uh, this turn, I should say. So we're not going to see any. Oh. Massive ballistic beaks. Well, I was going to see that one there with five damage counters. What's that? Three, six, nine, twelve, one fifty, one sixty damage. Well done. Thanks for helping walking us through that as well, Shay. Because everyone's going to need to know, right? Yes. Um, it is a lot of damage from these single prizes. And at the moment, this is where an yep. opportunity now yep. lands on Alex to be able to utilize things like Churro's... Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, Professor Churro would be nice, but Avery, that's my cast prediction there, by the way, is also <laughs> a very strong card. So, uh, Jimmy will now have to discard two Pokemon since he has five. You have to discard two, you have three bench Pokemon. So, Jirachi and that... Uh, um, do, 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 how do you pass that one again? Doduo. Doduo is going to hit the discard pile as well. And that Jirachi, we know, very strong. Yeah, but we've already seen that Cresselia go, so maybe for the time being, doesn't have to worry about it. Has to worry about the actual threat on the board right now. That Screamtail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So keeps the Manaphy around for the time being. Hasn't, of course, found... I don't think has found a Truro no. uh, yet, because I think that it was actually Iono's. It got, put to, the it got yeah. put to the bottom, yeah, so... Yeah. But, you know, it's done its work. It's putting itself in a position where Alex now is potentially going to go ahead on the prizes. Yep, and that's what we spoke about in game one, just trying to absorb some damage and then, and then go back into that one prize for one prize sort of strategy as we are going to see some psychic embrace to the active Scream Tail. Going to use that attack Roaring Scream, which does 20 damage for each damage counter on it to any one of your opponent's Pokemon. But since there's a mana feed, that will have to hit the active. But that's perfectly fine. Yeah. And it is over to Jimmy's turn now. What would you do? You choose another Dodrio at that point. Yeah. It's not really going to be as effective. So just taking out the axe, absolutely fine. Utilizing that single prizer. We do see a super rod come down from Jimmy's side. He has to re-establish his board, Shay. That's yep. going to be the most important aspect here. Um, does continue to have zooming draws as well and Artisan yep. uh, to start trying to rebuild as soon as possible. There's the Jirachi, understanding the threats of... Alexander's God of our deck right now and the Nest Ball, so his board's just replenished very quickly. That was a very efficient one turn. board right there, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're going to see the, the combination of Super to shuffle them back in and then Artisan and Nest Ball to grab them back. Now, Jimmy has a few options for supporters here. He's going to start off with a uh, zooming draw. Another boss's orders. So, Ooh. can I actually pick up the two prize KO? It needs an energy card, actually. Did we see an energy in that hand? I'm not too sure we did. Oh, oh no, there's, there's one jet. jet. There's one jet. jet. Okay, okay, okay. Woo. So there's options available here. It's just whether he will choose to maybe take this out now, because knowing that Alex does play something like, or maybe not knowing, but has to play as if maybe he does to, to, there we to go. collapse there we it go. away or use True. Truro scenario. Um, let's take these two prizes now yep. and put myself in a, the advantageous spot once again. 
yeah, I think that's um, that's the way to go. Like you said, if you try and maybe get too clever, collapse stadiums, another out or um, Professor Chur scenario, and you'd be devastated to miss uh, miss out on those two prizes. As Jimmy actually takes a prize card advantage here, currently at three prizes, and Alexander starts to start. I tell you what. Chat viewers, you picked a fantastic community choice. So this game, these games have been riveting as Alexander does discard energy off concealed cards to draw two more. And as per usual, just look at the size of the hand that Alex has in terms of options. You know, that deck is wearing thin now. Wow. So all of the options. There's the, there's there's the collapse. collapse and the Chura is in hand as well. A turn too late, unfortunately. But remember, in this scenario, I don't think Alex has as much to worry about simply because... Um, Overcoming one prize deficit yes. is, is possible. Yeah, yeah, it's for sure. actually very doable when you have a Pokemon that can't really be knocked out with ease if you kind of combine it with something like Iono. Yes. Um, as we do see further refinements, there's one card left in the deck. That's a boss. But is there any real targets you need? Maybe trying to utilize that reversal energy as a single prize attacker. Does have the Scream Tail in the active spot, can start swinging yeah. away still yeah. anyway. Um, maybe doesn't have to, won't, I'm sure try to utilize a god of our ex evolution there's the collapse coming down now which we do see the jirachi go yeah so maybe we start to see how does alex utilize that cresselia if that scream tail is still blocked slightly or impacted quite a lot from that manaphy yeah, so let's see what happens. We are going to see that Iono. That's going to, ooh, maybe, debating it. We are going to see an, um, an evolution to the Guard of IX. We are going to see that Iono. I mean, Alexander did have to actually replenish his deck a little bit since World currently was at one, forest card, uh, one card left in the deck, I should say. And then if you was to not be able to draw a card at the start of the turn, you would lose. So Alexander is going to Iono there. And Jimmy, this could be a very interesting Iono because Jimmy, you know, outside of zooming draw, doesn't play too much onboard draw options as we do see just, well, yeah, two zooming draw. And one of them will be getting KO'd actually, so only yeah. one copy of Zooming Draw to use. As we are going to see that Scream Tail KO in the active, Alexander goes down to three prize cards. Yeah, and this is what we've spoken about. If you can limit those draw power of Jimmy's deck, because it's just that one there, and it's just, he's not got much else in terms of draw, mm. so we'll have to try and find a way to utilize it. And then it's just an Onyx and a Doduo on the bench right now. There's the energy attachment, so we'll have an opportunity to take a knockout here. We do see the Artisan as well. Maybe just try and replenish the board a little bit more. Yep. And I guess get those cards that are put to the bottom. Get them more shuffled in yep. as well in case you want to draw some of them back. There was a, quite a few supporters in Jimmy's hand before the Iron. And I, I think it's quite interesting to see an Onyx come down. Yeah, I, I think maybe there's no no more Doduos that could be played, uh, mm -hmm. potentially. But maybe this yep. is the way you synergize the deck once again. We spoke about maybe using Steelix early game as an attacker to start ramping up damage. Mm -hmm. But maybe when there's no damage mid-game, you can start thinking about ramping that damage back up again in the mid-game to late-game, because you've still got a really efficient attacker with 130 damage. And I think you're right. You know, you don't have to strictly use things in the early game. I just saw a little sneaky damage pump being there, moving two damage from the active Dodrio down to the bench Doduo. And I think that's key. I think what Jimmy's going to try and do, use the uh, Steelix Earthquake again, and then try and get this bench Doduo ready to try and take a big one-shot shot if necessary yeah there's just lots of little tricky steps yeah, that have really to be played is. out in this game i mean jimmy right now doesn't have too much going in the hand no. but still puts himself in a in a fairly good position but alex here is going to try and utilize that god of our ex as much as possible gets yep. in a yep. position where it can tank a hit, not have to worry about such a dangerous, luxurious cape combo with that Doduo or Dodrio if it gets a chance to evolve up um, going forward. As it looks like Alexander is going to play a super rod and then going to use the Artisan to fetch that Rolts back straight away. And we are going to see a Fog Crystal being played as well. Going to have a Psychic, a Basic Psychic Pokemon or a Basic Psychic Energy as Alex does take the Basic Psychic Energy there as well. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think this this has been a really well played game here by really Alex's has. side. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, didn't find that collapse or Churros on the right turn for the first God of our EX, mm. but just knowing to utilize such a big bulky Pokemon um, has been really key to this matchup so far. And with you know Jimmy not able to find a way to overcome that on that one of those turns where he had to unfortunately just deal 160 with one of those Dodrios. Um, it's now come to this point where Alex has a big tanky Pokemon in the active spot, takes a knockout, can keep swinging, 
Uh, and then Here we go. with the hand, hopefully find a way to get remove it from the active spot and get it out of play and still utilize some of those single prizes that remain. So do you see another miracle force there, knockout. Jimmy having to decide which attacker he will progress with. Top deck. Just an energy. En oh, it has the Dodrio in hand, so it does have access to zooming draw as well. Steelix to start ramping up some of that damage. Dodrio. See the Dodrio off the zooming draw, another Dodrio. So it looks like well, I was going to see an earthquake. Yeah, I think actually that Dodrio that um, has just been evolved up to was the last prize that Jimmy took. So I oh, right. forward being in one of those uh, middle spots of the prizes um, as they were being taken. As we do see 130 damage there. Now that God of Oz in range, we're of gonna, course. We're going to see the Professor Choro. We will need to be looking for that. I mean, that, I think this is this is the turn, right? If we don't, because we've already seen collapse being used. So I don't know, really want to try, try and find the Professor Choro if possible. Refinement as a boss's orders. This is this is going to be a, a vital key couple of turns. I don't want to look too far okay. into the, into the Talk future. Talk to me. What is that? With the Churro, um, this is this is where it's going to be key. I mean, he could evolve up again and take another tanky hit. Oh, actually, no, because he's one one prize ahead. I was just thinking about the Dodrio does have the oh, option for Luxurious true. Cape later. Yeah, if no, there's a big right. EX attack to try and take there's two the prizes. There's a Churro, so yeah, that's massive. The... If we could get the energy sort of set up to try and checkmate the board now, have two attackers on the go. Does Alexander put himself in a fantastic position to take game oh, two? Oh, well, yeah, you can Chura and then attack with the, um, yeah, that one prize one, right? And then Jimmy will be able to take two prize cards in one turn because you just don't put down another two prize, all right? Yeah, and then ha hold the God of our EX yep. to power up a next attacker for the next turn. There we see a massive Professor wow. Chura scenario there. The energy going into that hat. Dan? Oh, we do see just a scoop up as yeah, well okay, yeah, yeah. from Jimmy's wow. side. Of what a fantastic way to showcase both of these decks here. Ooh. Alexander utilizing that Truro scenario to great effect and taking game two. Yeah, but we saw that Professor Churro, we said how impactful it could be, right? We saw the, and you can get that effect by Professor Churro, or you can get it by a collapsed stadium. And we just, it just takes one use. That's all it takes. We just trade in one prizes for one prizes. You absorb a hit. Professor Churro gets you straight back into that race. Alexander identifying his wink on there and managed to get it. Yeah, and just kind of getting that board set up in a fantastic way. This time, Jimmy not being able to take back-to-back -back knockouts without losing a prize himself just meant that Alex had a way to overcome that deficit. It's what we yeah. spoke about. It's all yeah. about that prize mapping, which is so vital when you're facing up against a single prize that you have to utilize the value of the HP of your Pokemon mm -hmm. to great effect. And that's exactly what Alex was able to do. Yep, and you know, uh, shout out there to Jimmy. You know, I wasn't quite able to close it out. Alexander sort of, I think, realized, okay, I can, I, I can see how this deck works. Now I know how to try and play against it a little bit better and force um, Jimmy to play through, you know, more challenges almost. You know, ask those questions because, like I said, outside of zooming draw, which doesn't really see you that many cards unless you have multiple in play, you know, the Ionos plus, you know, certain hoops can be really hard for Jimmy's deck to navigate. Yeah, and typically with sort of the decks that maybe Jimmy's playing, you know, he does play four copies of Iono, but if he's facing up against other very smaller, squishier single prize Pokemon that he can take knockouts very quickly um, with his Steelix, it means his Iono is detrimental for his own deck. As we are going to see, Jimmy starting off our game free here. Has a Dojo in the active and then attaches a Jet Energy and passes. Yeah, no real threats on Alex side of the board, remember. Um, not really able to utilize an attacker. So that Doduo in the active spot with the energy can start thinking about, well, maybe using, using it to either retreat or maybe start just dealing some damage in some way, shape, or form. Of course, with needing to find a way to ramp up damage on itself with either zooming draw, maybe damage pump, and, and different things like that at the same time. Don't know if it's going to be able to find a knockout even on this Screamtail, because 90 HP actually might be a bit of a stretch. Yeah, no, this is the first game where Jimmy wasn't able to get Onyx down, so yeah, uh, uh, was it Beak isn't going to be very good. Ballistic Beak, Ballistic yeah. Beak isn't going to be very good uh, right now. And worth noting for the prize cards there, Alexander hasn't prized anything too impactful. Made that one copy of Collapsed and one Reversal. Could could be interesting, but worth noting, we've seen how impactful that Jirachi has been for Jimmy. Mm. That's currently in the prize cards for Jimmy there. So Jimmy has a few hurdles to navigate. I think not having down an Onyx turn one, though, is huge. 
Yeah, massive, because we've got to start thinking about, as we do see uh, the concealed cars from that Radiant Greninja, fantastic addition, of course, that we've seen throughout the format, throughout since its inclusion into the meta game, um, not only for the ability, but for its attack as well, obviously not in the guard of our deck, um, but we do see it as a fantastic support Pokemon. But just thinking back to Jimmy's side, yep. with two Doduos available, if they, even if they both evolve up to a Dodrio, zooming draw, putting one damage counter on itself on each of them, that's only two after a damage pump move. Yeah. It's only dealing 70 damage. 70 damage. Close, <laughs> but not quite. And you don't get prize cards for being close to KOs, unfortunately, in a Pokemon trading card game. You have to fully KO them. As Alexander has filled his bench there, four rolls down and the Raging Good Into. That's a fantastic start, especially when you consider that Jimmy won't be able to take a KO. I mean, this Scream Tail, I mean, I was going to say, you could, you could even attack with it, but that actually help <laughs> the Dodrio yeah. out. So you don't want to be doing that. So we're not going to see the one for ener the uh, one for 30 energy slap. We're not going to see that. And we are going to see an Iono being played for Jimmy now. It's Jimmy's turn too. So we can, oh, as we do see a Dodrio being evolved as well. On the yeah, I, I think here, for the time being, doesn't really want to kind of risk um, you losing a Dodrio. So swinging away for 70 damage as a maximum really wouldn't be too useful here. Although at the same time, doesn't really want to lose a Dodrio because he wants no. to evolve up, get that zooming draw going um, and just get himself into the game as that great ball there oh. does find a Steelix and a Dodrio. Dodrio in hand already, so takes the Steelix. Does, is there an out to an Onyx right now to start benching, start thinking about evolving up? I think there was an Ultra Ball in hand, or maybe a Nest Ball, but yeah, not quite easy right of you. And if you're Jimmy, do you just leave the Dodo um, do 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 in the active? As it's going to evolve into Dodo anyway. <laughs> you, you just go. leave it in the active and say, chances are you're not going to be able to KO this anyway, unless you have a monumental turn two. Uh, yeah, potentially. I mean, just the, the, there's so many questions that have to be asked here, right? I mean, this is after a Iono, after all. There's an Artisan, so things can start to get going ah, okay. oh, after that really zooming draw there, which was fantastic. I'm sure we'll see another zooming draw from that bench Dodrio as well. Um, so we could start seeing things going from Jimmy, but there's that potential thing here where he will be the one who will go down on prizes yeah. and have that deficit that he needs to overcome against a deck which is so good at being a single prize deck. I tell you what, Gardevoir is traditionally a combat deck, right? If Gardevoir is actually in the advantage, uh, as in on the prize trade, golly, is it hard because it's, it's going to draw more cards, right? Like, sure, mm -hmm. Jimmy does have the option to, you know, one shot a guard of IX via damage pumps and luxurious capes, even. But it's so much easier for Alexander to just tank a hit, Professor Churro collapsed, and then get back in the race. That's so much easier because you have refinement, you know, times three or times four a lot of the time, and Shining Arcana as well. As Jimmy is just going to do a ballistic beak and then pass it over to Alex. Yeah, that 40 damage now sitting on that Scream Tail. We do see the level ball come down immediately. Immediately uh, to grab a refinement curlier here from Alex's side of the board. So now we'll have at least two Pokemon that can draw uh, additional cards. We do see the Mirage Step curlier as well. Fantastic addition to the deck. And an Iono just to top things off before we start drawing more cards. And it looks like, let's see, so both players are going to get six new cards as well. One thing worth noting about Alex, time. Oh, Currently yes. at one minute left. Yeah, this is traditionally going to be two one prize, well, I say for the most part now, one prize decks squaring off against each other. So time is going to most likely be a factor here. Yeah, this, uh, as, as we do start to see it ticking down with time being a factor, it does mean that... We're likely to not see a conclusion to game three, um, but as we do see further refinement draws here, lots of energy in hand, uh, not really much else going, but is it necessary even in this, if you're thinking about this game plan going on beyond further, I think you're quite happy to kind of sit in this scenario and know that you may go a prize down, but in latter turns and latter parts of the game, you can find a way back. Yeah, and I think that's what Alexander's option to do there. He's going to pass it over. Jimmy is going to start the turn off there for the Artisan. Going to find a Dodo, um, a Doduo, I should say. And then um, going to put it on the bench. Look at that hand. We see some energy. We see a Steelix. So we, are, we could see an Earthquake. That's going to be fun. You know, 130 damage. It's going to be a big KO. Yeah. And we'll start getting those damage counters. We're going to see a boss's orders as well. Yeah, and I've just got confirmation. As yep. you've seen, the time has been ticking down oh, as well. Oh, so it has. Time has been called. Okay. As has been playing out. So Jimmy is currently turn zero. 
um, as we do see the boss, of course, and the Steelix into the active manoeuvre um, after the strict retreat with the energy cost, as yep. we do see again the 130 to the active and then 150 to his own oh. bench. Massive, massive damage. Prize ahead here. This is turn one. Um, I believe as we see from that dice as well, thank you very much, judges, to help support us, <laughs> viewers, to make sure that we can follow along at the same time. Um, so just uh, in case the viewers at home don't know how the time will work, Alex, why don't you talk to us about that? Yep, so when time is called, um, of course, this is game three now. Um, if there is no conclusion uh, to game three... Um, Sorry, just to cut you off there, we do see an Avery being played. That <laughs> Alexander is going to force Jimmy to discard two bench Pokemon. Please continue. No, oh, cheers. Thanks, <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you very much. We do have to follow the action, of course, as well. But we will see that with an unconcluded uh, game three, both players having won one game each, it would end up a tie. But with yeah. time, when time is called, the players who's currently um, turn it is, is turn zero and then each player gets two more turns so there'll be turn one which is what we're currently on with alexander go back over to jimmy for his final turn which is turn two of time yep. and then alex gets the final turn of the round in uh turn three so we do see the miracle force yep. there taking the knockout again one of the easier ways to take a knockout yep. on the steelix in this matchup but wow this this matchup wasn't something we'd expected oh, to have seen really not. here in utrecht at the special at the Pokemon special event. Um, just seeing Dodrio and alongside, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, the Onyx as part of the, the first generation of Pokemon yeah. as well in a deck really comes to the fore. You know, this puts him potentially, if we don't see a conclusion, at 3 0 1. Both players, of course, doing fantastically well to be in this position. Well, you know, with the way the time, like you said, of unconcluded game three, uh, this game will sort of, no, you know, not finish as it were. But we could see. A real big ballistic beak still. Yeah. Or a big KO. I would love to see ballistic beak do, uh, you know, take a big <laughs> mass amount of damage. Obviously, zoom in, whatever it is. One damage pump in hand. Oh, we'll see the skate rope. Okay, so we're not going <laughs> to... <laughs> yeah, Maybe not. Maybe not this time. But... Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> but there, there was that opportunity there. We already saw it in game one, that massive potential ballistic beak knockout with that luxurious cape combo, being able to put 10 damage counters on itself. We do see the energy attachment to the active Dodrio. It's going to be swinging away, beaking against that scream tail, and off we go to the discard, poor little friend. Yep, that ballistic <laughs> going to take a KO. Uh, we are going to go over, and I think we're just going to see uh, yep. <laughs> a, a sort of a, a, you know a concessionist saying, right, you know, agreement. Yeah, an agreement is the correct <laughs> word there. You know, I can't take four prizes this turn. You haven't got a turn, so yeah, this game three will not conclude, and it will be a tie there for Jimmy and Alexander. But what a fantastic showing! Of both players, I think, as well, and both decks, too. Yeah, 